It's David Osborne, and um, this is my YouTube channel. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Today we're gonna to be talking about what is a gap year, why you've never heard of it, and how it could save you and your family $50,000. $50 million? $50,000. And we're gonna hopefully do all of that before I finish my coffee here. It's almost gone. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you get notified every time I drop a new video. So what the heck is a gap year? No, it's not where you take up a year working a sales position at your local gap. A gap year is where you take a year off between your studies or before entering the workforce. So traditionally, this happens between 12th grade or senior year of high school and freshman year of college or senior year of college and before entering the workforce, taking your first real job. I've been traveling around the world for about seven years now, and I've got to say, every year of travel that I do, I learn about as much as I learned in a year or two in college. And without a doubt, I have just as much fun traveling as I did when I was back at Arizona State. Go Sun Devils. However, when I graduated from high school, and even when I graduated from college, I had never heard of this term gap year. Everyone that I knew graduated from high school and went straight to college or community college for the most part. And then once we finished college after four to five years, they went straight into the workforce. And that's where they still are today, 10 years later. Has it been 10 years? Has not been 10 years. That's where they are today, eight years later. But I was fortunate to travel all the way to Arizona State and meet a lot of kids from California. And three of those kids that I did meet had similar ideas as myself and wanted to see what else there was outside of, you know, just working and doing the typical graduate high school, get into a good college, get a good job, get married, buy a house in the suburb, have a white picket fence. Nobody has white picket fences. So after I graduated college, my parents offered me a gift. They weren't going to pay off my student loans, damn it, but they were going to send me to any place that I wanted to go around the world. So three of my friends and I took a gap month. We decided we were gonna to travel to Southeast Asia. And specifically, we went to Thailand. And I have to say, it absolutely changed my life. I saw a different way of travel. Everybody took scooters to work. I rode a train for the first time through the rainforest of all places. I was waking up at 6 a.m. to start my days excited for the first time in life. I can still remember dreading waking up at 6 a.m. in high school, dreading waking up before 11 a.m. in college. But I'm traveling around Thailand, waking up at 6 a.m. excited because every day is an adventure. I was the most alive I'd ever felt. I was learning new things every day. I was learning a little bit of the language. Sawadee kap, kapun kap. I was trying new dishes, different foods, spicy foods, things in the markets. I was facing fears on a daily basis. And best of all, I was making friends from all around the world. Now, mind you, all of this was after traveling around Thailand for just one month. Imagine if I had done this for 12 months. How much of the language I could have picked up? How much of the culture, the, the cooking? I, I probably, if I really applied myself, could have opened my own Thai restaurant back in Arizona afterwards. I came back to America and started working after that month and I had so many stories to tell. It was as if I went to the moon and came back and I was sharing with the moon rocks because no one in my age group at 22, 23 years old had ever really done anything like this. But you would be absolutely shocked to see the numbers from Britain, Scandinavian countries, the Dutch, Australians. These people all have gap years worked into their culture, into their society, into their tradition. It's, it's sort of a rite of passage for a lot of these young people. Now, I don't know exactly why this hasn't picked up in America as a part of our culture, but I do have a theory. You see, in America, we often find ourselves living to work. As a famous poet once said, work, 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 da, 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 da. Those are the lyrics, right? Other countries where I've traveled to the people don't live to go into an office every morning. They work and earn money so that they can actually enjoy life. I know it sounds crazy, right? 
When you see this for the first time, it can actually change the way you look at life. And especially because you see that these people who are working to live, not living to work, these people aren't poor. Some of them are rich, millionaires even. They still find time to clock out at five o'clock, shut off their phone, shut off their work life, and go surf or go to a cafe and meet up with friends. They find time to actually enjoy life. And this is something that we don't really do as Americans. We kind of pride ourselves on working till 6, 7 p.m. and then fighting the one hour rush hour traffic to get home and then hitting the gym. Then we just do it all again. And we trade five days for two days of freedom. And I just think that's a bad deal. But the only reason I've been able to come to that conclusion is because I've seen the other side. When you travel around the world, when you get an opportunity to have a gap year, you can see that other places around the world have different values than we do back in the States. And this can be a breath of fresh air. You might find that you value some different things as well. Now, I promised you in the beginning of this video that I'm going to tell you how a gap year could save you and your family $50,000. And I'm going to do that right now. The majority of college students change their degree at least once in their four years of college, which sometimes extends it to four and a half years like myself, or five years like other people, or six years even. And with each year costing between 40 and 50,000 US dollars, that extra year is going to cost you. Someone's got to pay for it, either by taking on more student loans or coming out of your parents' pockets. I believe taking a gap year gives you a chance to get to know yourself and if you go out into the real world, you'll find out what are real problems people are facing and what are real things that you're interested in. You will finally give yourself time to get to know yourself. And if you do this, you will come to school more confident in knowing what it is you want to kind of do with your life. I've done the full round the world trip and across the country trip. And I must say, it's never cost me more than $10,000 to make it all the way around the world or to make it all the way across the country and taking my time in doing so. If you take $50,000, which is what you would have paid for one year of school at Arizona State, and you don't do that first year, you just go and you travel, well, you're saving your family about $44,000 that year, and you could learn so much in that year. So my apologies for, for promising I could save you 50,000. It's gonna be somewhere more like 40 or $44,000, but you know, still a decent size of money. And I hope you'll take my advice on this. If you're 18 watching this or 17 watching it, and you're worried that you're gonna be left behind because your friends are gonna graduate a year earlier than you or even two years earlier than you, I promise you it's not gonna hinder you going into the workforce at 23 years old as opposed to 22 years. Now graduating with a second language on the other hand or a friend in France that can connect you with an employer, now that's something worth writing home about. And if you don't want to take my advice because, you know, I'm just some guy on the internet making YouTube videos, then take the Obama's advice. But what is raising some eyebrows is the year off Malia will take, a gap year, as it's called, before she begins Harvard in the fall of 2017. And I'm telling you, I believe that the elite and the wealthy and the people who know a little something something, those people in the know are taking this gap year seriously. And the people that are in the middle class and the working class in America we don't even get a chance to hear about this. So I hope that this opens your mind. I hope that it gives you something to think about and talk about with your friends and your family. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button and mention down in the comments, tell me where you'd like to take a gap year. You know, it doesn't have to just be one country. It doesn't even have to be abroad. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Love you guys. Stay safe. Catch you next time.